it does offer some crazy shenanigans in the mid lane. I've seen Doonby spamming the Renekton, but yeah. we do get the Ash here. It gives LWX Pryo in the bot lane, which is something FPX love to try and set up those dives or roams and help TN out in the early game. It's kind of funny. We'll talk a little bit about shenanigans as we go through this. After you've had a big look at Solo Q, sir, but things standard so far with the Graves Nautilus for IG, Ning on the Graves. And the funny thing about this is, you're, you must be thinking, why are IG first rotationing Nautilus? It's because Crisp has played 21 games of Nautilus to split. Yes. His second most played champion is Leona at eight. It's uh, it's a lot to say the least, right? And Balan, we know that's his most played too. I think a lot of fans are probably happy though that Crisp isn't getting his hands on the Nautilus after the performance against Oh my God, it has been middling, right? Uh, also and to say the least. But now we do see Tien going over to that Kindred. It has been something he's been playing a lot in solo queue. We've seen it favored by junglers like Kanavi coming into playoffs. Yep. So obviously FPX taking a page out of their, their book. And there is the Galio that Munchables and Dagda was talking about. This is something that Duinby does exceptionally well on and can look to, you know, enable his side lanes. Hit those sides, right? Dive bot, look at FPX and their original style of 2019. He's taking a page out of that while Invictus Gaming, this could be setting up a safer bottom lane with this center, given over to Puck. And it always signals us that we're going to be playing towards the soul lanes, which when you have IG on the rift is something you want. So yep. I like it right now. We have a carry jungler coming out. We're going to have the dawning shadows coming out from the Senna later on. You have a bunch of bursts. When you look at FPX's comp so far with that Kindred ultimate, it does pretty well surviving that initial burst. Which means we go into the second ban phase with FPX looking to target out those solo lanes, but IG, a couple more supports to take off the board. And an interesting thing is Renekton has not been picked or banned yet. Of course, it is a very Gimgoon style champion. Yep. Not something we'd expect to see the Shion. He's actually only played it once this summer. Knowing IG, I would expect them to pick up mid on their fourth pick. Rookie, of course, has a lot of blindable champions. The Orianna has been his go-to this split. His second most played is the Azir. And I feel like you can insert any mid lane into this comp pretty easily, but it would be nice to see Rookie on something that is a bit more of a lane bully. Maybe you can see something... What do you reckon? I was going to say, you could probably bring the Zoe out, but you are facing the Galio. Another potential option is reaching down in your pool and bringing out something like a Corky, which we haven't seen in a oh, long yeah. time. But that is a counter into the Galio. It also does quite well into the Kindred because you don't have to commit into going into her and, you know, going to the Lamb's just fight. I guess the bonus is here that both Brookie and the Shy have large champion pools. The Shy especially 15 unique champions played. So hard to ban him away. But seeing the Fiora may open something up as the Nico is a flex. This has been a signature of Rookie, though. Yes, He's played it, it all year long. Of course, it did get some buffs, so it's nice to see him on it. It does find into the Galio matchup. Very hard for him to get those all-ins on you with those Tangle Barbs. And this is strange, because we saw it in their last match against V5 that yeah, we did. they're playing with Gimgoon, but they're putting him on all these Con-style champions. That's right, but we do know that Gimgoon and Solo Q, this has been spammed a lot as of recently. We know that Gimgoon and Solo Q has always been different to competitive play, at least until now. And what we saw against V5. Chris going to put himself on a hook champion while we get FPX's draft, which is going to be quite different to what we're used to. And a Mordekaiser for the Shy. He started playing this champion this year for the first time, and I think he likes it. He's fallen in love with it, right? <laughs> it's, it's even funny because if you followed the Shy in solo queue, he's almost always exclusively played AD carries and Jace. Yeah. But he's actually been playing this a lot recently as well, so. IG going back to a comp that's very comfortable for them. The thing that's interesting is it does very well when the enemy wants to come into them. Of course, having the Death Realm to dissuade any engage. Nico as well with her ultimate being able to lock those carries down. But for the side of FPX, they do have that engage. They do want to go in, but they can also just hold the enemy at bay, play through their side lane pressure, because Camille plus Galio is such good lockout. I was going to say, there's a lot of options for Doombi here with Camille top, with the Ash and the Thresh bottom. A lot of CC to play through, and windows for FPX might be the way to go in game one. I like FPX's comp a lot. I definitely feel like they came out ahead with this draft because like you're saying, they have more options. When you have more options, that's always nice to go through, but I feel like you can't just look at these drafts on paper and say which is right and which is wrong. Because when thought, Jay. When, and we have FPX playing Camille top. Like this is not what Gim Goon has been known for this past year, especially, but even going back further in his career, right? It's been about those tanks and bruisers in the top lane. If not a tank, a bruiser, the GP. Whereas on the other side, let's just quickly run into IG because we see the Mordekaiser, we see the Nico, We see Ning on a Graves, and you talked about the center being able to hold that bottom line while our solar lanes are going to be the priority, much as we know with Invictus Gaming. Yeah, and again, I can see how their draft functions, but I don't think there's any great windows for IG to play around. There isn't like really any good gank set up, right? I guess you do have a bit of CC in mid lane. You do have mixed damage coming out on both of your soul lanes, but Camille, extremely mobile. Yep. Galio as well, has that E2 get away or the taunt trying to get out of there. 
what I expect IG to do is to try and get that prio in the mid lane and enable Ning to play an aggressive dueling style in the river. But ladies and gentlemen, where are the Gyos at? What happened? And these are the teams you'd think would have the most Gyos. They would, absolutely. That arena right now, if we had people in it, would be completely packed. I dare say as much as a grand final. Just a heads up, this is our regional qualifier. This is day two of our regional qualifier. One of these world teams is going home. It's do or die. And one team has to verse LGD. The funny thing about this is IG were in the exact same position in 2019 summer. They beat JDG 3-2. Then they got into the regional finals versus top esports and 3-2 them as well. They have to do the same thing against FPX and LGD. But at least they have the audience behind them. Yep, the Western audience being a big fan of IG. And obviously IG has been much more of a, a staple over the years, obviously winning Worlds in 2018. Rookie has been around for so long, 2015 spring. Yep. I mean, even further than that, you know, going back to champions in Korea. Back in the day, but spent more time here in China in, in the LPL. <laughs> I mean, has been five years. Yeah. Well, a lot of time, but... Well, people might have been wondering, was he a season one player? Uh, no, sir. No, he was not, but he's a damn good player, that's for sure. Glacial Augment coming out of the Nico mid and the harassability of a W start with the a bit of attack speed and the third hit prop. And this is just standard on Nico. Uh, it's nice to have the Glacial to set up all of your abilities, right? You have uh, skill shot in your Q, skill shot CC, so it's nice. She doesn't really uh, pair too well with any of the other runes. The interesting thing for me is that we see Duinby going back to this Predator Galio, which <laughs> yeah. we saw fall out of prevalence when the change came in. Now you do get that movement speed when you're moving towards the enemy target rather than just outright, which a lot of players didn't like because it takes away a lot of the utility. Yeah. But at least, you know, running at a player with Shield of Duran gives you a bit of that momentum as Chris now and LWX are targeting Bao Lan. These are really good trades. They end up winning out. The sustain of Pup is not that large here in the early game. So LWX and Chris will hit two. An important thing to note is IG's comp is definitely the one that needs to start getting ahead. And yep. sure, you have things like Senna that do scale quite well, but on the opposite spectrum, you have a Kindred in the jungle. You have this Camille who's going to be able to outdo the Mordekaiser in the Death Realm is later on. Is this Khan playing? Are we sure this is Gimgoon? Because Tien's ganking top. The Hookshot, Wallshot, pops the Flash, but the Shy burns it too early on this Mordekaiser. One, two, and three. And you know what? That's a very the Shy first blood. Munchable said they had 18 days to prepare, so of course FPX weren't going to come in with the standard stuff, clearly adapting their play style. And let's remember, this is how teams continuously punished IG early yes. on in the split, was just camping the Shy top. Level 2, and first blood goes over to FPX. I mean, the Shy dies immediately. He has teleport. The wave getting pushed, and he's walking back. That is a big advantage to start the Kindred off with. It goes back to our conversation earlier that you know, Tien has set up in his lanes. Tien has numerous ways to play out this game to where IG just don't exactly have those options. We can see Ning still just going through and full clearing his jungle. Tien, though. His mark was set up for the top side. This is perfect. He can go in for a bit of an They invade. have a stacked wave. Oh, yeah. Just go straight out for the dive. Death Grass going to be pretty crucial if this goes through. Gim Goon, the rest of the wave coming in. It does look like he's just going to recall and make sure that Ning isn't looking for any cheeky ganks on topside with Gim Goon having to crash that wave into turret to get the bounce back. Ladies and gentlemen, please note this is not Ning. This is Rookie who's walking down. Ning's actually in the river responding with the other scuttle. And away yeah, we go. It's a bit interesting, right? Where we have teams kind of trading sides in a sense yeah. where FPX are on top side and now IG getting full control of bot. We do see Ning trying to steal those Raptors right now. Of course, Rookie has priority and IG's bot lane is on the way first. But again, to reiterate your point, we want to see IG getting the ball rolling early. That's why top side gank is very good for FPX to kick this game off. And we want to see it happen through mid, because that's really the only place it could happen. I do like what they did there, to where, once again, Rookie has the prio in mid. So just push out, enable Ning to look for these steals, enable Ning to look for these duels, where you can always follow first and have that numbers advantage. But at least when you talk about a comp of IG that wants FPX to come into them, and are okay with that double glacial, with this Nico, with the center being able to pull back, and the Mordekaiser can separate one member. Feels like for IG, you know, those one, two items around the objective is going to be a lot of fun to watch. FPX also are a team that we expect to play perfect League of Legends, right? So they are going to make some missteps. The good thing for them is they don't really need to run into IG. They can just play back, try to set up those sites later on. I mean, you know, once we do get a few items under our belt, Camille definitely going to be able to outduel the Mordekaiser in the Death Realm. Yeah. But it's nice that Rookie got a lane bully champion because this is where Nico thrives. Uh, you know, those early levels, being able to bully out, especially with the range advantage in this. Galio 
having trouble to set up that E into taunt combo because the Tangle Barms can just stop you in your tracks. And he's doing the most with his, with his advantage. Almost 20 CS up already. And we know the guys are talking about extended laning phases for IG. Works out nicely. However, for the Shy, probably wants this to end as soon as possible because Tien's up top side. Ning nearby with a level advantage as the Shy is just waiting for this wave to push in. I expect Ning to come up to secure that the Shy can push this wave in. He might just back off and try to catch it safely. We do see that Ning is heading to the Raptors because that's where Tien's mark is. But Doombi's coming in as well. It's only level 5, but Shield Grand will do enough. Walking into Brush, the Lens helps out as Rookie. Now has the Pop Blossom available. They might be trying to sandwich this one. Both have a level lead. But Crispus here, that's the difference. And the mark given over. So two early marks for Tien on this Kindred. And this is a throwback to 2019 where we would see Chris find a lot of these clutch roams off of those early recall timings. Epix's bot lane got the recall first, so that's why Chris was able to get here early. But Balan, Balan waiting in the wings to match. I just love, though, that seeing Balan with the matches you pointed out is going back to the story that, that the guys on the desk talk about. You know, Ning and Balan have been grouping up. There has been a lot more synergy between the two, and Balan coming in has led this roster to you know, new highs until they got to the quarterfinals. Which, let's be fair, that series reminded me of Spring IG when they faced D-Star and looked like they had no prep whatsoever yeah. because they kept, I'm gonna stop as yeah, Balan goes forward. We expect a bit of blood in the series. There's dredge line into the wall, the Death Sense reconnects onto the jungler as well, sets up the level six Galio. Doobie flies in with double knockup, the pop blossom hits down on the two. And you know what? Rookie better than Doobie at this point as Ding gets taunted up, engaged on, because Gimgun has flown in the TP from the Shy a little bit too late. <laughs> he gets the red buff, probably happy about that, but can't use his death realm. Well, I mean, one for one, and your top laner gets the red buff. I think IG overall are feeling <laughs> okay. good, especially when the fact is, right, it, it's hard for them to create a lot of these windows. They are going back to play the way we expected, right, of abusing their lane priorities to set up four Nings and Vades. And I really liked Rookie. He was uh, disguised, so came in with the ultimate, yeah. which didn't have the, the channel time set up. Just went straight in. Duinby got locked down. We saw Tien get locked down as well. Chris was the one who ultimately went down on the side of MPSO. And Rookie getting the kill off that fight screams to me that, all right, well, even though Gimgun picked up one and the sideline threat is huge, hold the phone. Balan had to burn his flash. And getting caught out in the lane. Eldar and Chris have been laning well so far, Lyric. And I'm going to avoid my earlier point because this is a level 6 bottom lane, soon to be for Chris too. They do have a nice matchup, though, having the Ash almost always secures you lane priority in situations like this. Yep. Chris, though, still wanting to be this aggressive playmaker. And full teams even right now. Just going to reiterate, that does spell good things for the side of FPX. Doombie was heading on up just to clear some vision with Rift Herald now available. Gets vision of Raptor, sees that Ning is not there yet. The thing that is nice about this Mordekaiser pick, in a sense, is the Come fact on. that you can't have this dual Camille into Galio play, or at least it's going to be a lot harder to execute, right? Because you go in with the Hextech ultimatum, Mordekaiser pulls you to the death realm, yeah. Galio now has nothing to follow up on. Close enough, he just has to hold his head in his hands to but to love death realm. When you're winning the matchup regardless, though, I don't think you feel too bad as FPX not yeah. being able to look for that play. Herald's being started here, though, Lyric. I mean, when I say start, I mean almost done. IG are not here for the play. And it's just going to go down. Tien with a good early jungle game. You could see that IG wanted to react. They came up, but just realized they were a bit short. Of course, you don't need to rotate Puff over because he does have that Dawning Shadows to come out across the map. But as you said, Tien having a good game so far, putting a lot of good pressure on top side, now picking up that Herald. The question is going to be where do they drop it? They haven't gotten any plates as of yet, so yep. there's no like clear target. When you look at this comp, you would expect they want to put it towards top side, get Gimgun rolling, but you do have very good setup in the bot lane with that Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Yeah, you really do. Back up and available. Chris will hit six soon. I've said that before. As I also want to ask you, Lyric, what happens with the lead Rookie has built up in this lane? About 30 CS already and the kill. How do IG translate that? So it's exactly as we hear, see here on our screen, right? He's going to be able to constantly out-trade doing be in the mid lane. It's going to enable him to move on the map more, set up for these scuttles, potentially set up for this fight at Drake for IG. And we saw it in the last red buff invade where, hey, you can get a nice dredge line coming in, bait FPX in, and set up for a massive ultimate coming out from Rookie. Unfortunately, nothing happens in the bottom lane, so we're going to be walking back for now. As that dragon staring them in the face, Ning gets positional advantage with the wards put down. Tien now hovering in the back of the wave. He'll get spotted out. That Herald, as you mentioned, will be decided to go bot. 
objective, so they are pushing out. Again, this is where all their tools are. They have the priority in the bot lane with Yash. They do pick up one plate, should be able to get a few more. Now I wonder if FPX will be willing to turn to Drake. It doesn't look like it because we do see that Rookie has matched the roam on the side. This guy's his Balan. Yep. And now Ming. Everyone backs away too. Toombi has TP and ulti, but will be far away. I was going to say, we can actually see IG be a bit cheeky right now and potentially just start this Drake up knowing that the members of FPX would go for those recalls. You know Especially what? with the Mark spawning on the top half of the map. I was just going to say, you know what I wish it did with Nika? I wish, it, you know, as Graves, you got the double shot in, so it was a bit more convincing that it was a clone. Even if it didn't do the damage with things like wards, I should be a developer. Yes, you should. Maybe I will become like Jat one day. So you're going to go to be a developer, come back to casting, and then go coach. Who are you yeah. going to coach? <laughs> Ghostbusters. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Team Liquid. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I really don't know. V5. Maybe. Well, you are taking my dreams. Oh, LWX sorry. has Yero. The Shy again. You talked about this interaction, though, and Channel Star oh. flashed away from the Shy little dosy do sidestep. But remember, FPX have grouped up as four in this top lane, so I'm not sure it's going to end here. And we need to remember that the Rift Herald should be the next objective to come up, so getting this swap is quite nice. It looks like they're potentially going to send Gimbu now down to the bot lane. They don't have that engage tool coming out from the Ash anymore, so realistically, FPX don't have a way of forcing a fight if they want to. Also note that Doombi's stuck in this mid lane for now, up against Rookie once again. 30 CS behind. Yeah, consistently, right? And I'm still waiting for that buy to come back, because there is a stopwatch in the inventory as a priority for Rookie. And that Pop Blossom, of course, the interaction afterwards, the whole stasis. Which is pretty nice. Rookie now on the mend after clearing out that wave to do the same for some vision and now, keep doing holding bot. Now we expect to see IG get control of that topside river. We do see that FBX do still have some vision left over. We see Rookie leaning in. They're going to clear that out, take the Scuttle Crab. It, I expect him to go into FBX's topside jungle, maybe try to set up some deep vision, look for any picks, but... Realistically, I don't think they have a way of setting up a dive on top side or looking for these easy ganks. LWX and Crisp are quite safe. Yeah. Fox makes it super hard as well. Tian going to be taking away a mark. What's he at? Oh, okay. Range advantage now given over as the Shy. You know what? A normal the Shy would ult that straight away, but decides not to considering that uh, the Gromp is gone. They're going to get a bit of information on Tien. He does have Ninja Tabbies and Seeker's Arm Guard, so he's feeling quite fine into this 1v1, especially because Gimjun hasn't picked up his Trinity Force yet. But it's very close. I mean, that Carl almost done. Tien here still hovering once again. And he even has, I mean, he even has his uh, passive onto the Shy, so oh, yeah. we know exactly what FPX want to do. But here we go. Level 10 versus level 9. Gimjun dodges away from the Mace. Defron going to be used as there's the interaction with Doombi, but the problem is. One versus three as he comes on out, and Gimgoon definitely isn't going to die. Dodges away. The Shy, welcome to your hell. Zero and two as the Chan across the arrow was not really necessary, but worth a shot. Doesn't matter if the combo doesn't work out the, you know, clean and cut way oh, it's supposed to. Excuse you me. still lock them down. You still lock them down in the lane. It still gives enough time for enough members to come to secure that. And FPX use that window to secure the spot lane turret. Early gold lead here is Teleport used to defend. Even go on the offensive with Crisp and the death sentence. Won't be able to connect Doombi after the fact. Pop Blossom coming in. Tien is blind! Oh my lord! What a beautiful creation Nico is. Yep. Rookie Massive showing us why he has always gone back to this pick throughout the year. Doing a great job so far. But you pointed out earlier, right? FPX are the ones with the gold lead. We've even seen it continuously throughout this game that FPX have all the options. They can make the plays with the Enchant Crystal Arrow. They can make plays on the opposite side of the map coming out from the Hextech Ultimatum. And IG right there, Rookie, just relied on Tien going too far forward. It, isn't it really stereotypical of what this season has been when IG in the top side failing where Ning hasn't been able to get so far off the ground bar the CS advantage we're seeing. Rookie really is that standout for IG as he's been all season. The nice thing for Rookie as well on the Nico is your build is just so cheap. All of your core yeah. items, the GLP, the Twin Shadows, you do get those core items very early on. And that's another reason why Nico is kind of such a, a nice mid-game champion because you come online so much earlier than every other champion in the game. See him out of burst. Of, this is an action replay. Look at this. All right, we'll try that one again in a second. Was, uh, you, know, you know what? Tien put that replay up. Yes, that's, why, did. that's why it didn't work. Tien didn't want to see it. He cut it. Let's, let's stop that. So, 
Epics are starting to stop, and Valiant is posturing like they want to contest. We see the other members heading over now. Spotted out there with the scrying old Valiant. Gimgun has TP. There's two of them, and TP is going to be coming in from Gimgun, as you mentioned. Nice call. Hextech ultimate is available. Herald just goes down. IG now on the choke, but hooked out by Chris. There's going to be no further engage. They've already gotten the Herald. They can just walk. This shows, right? We've said IG want the enemy to engage into their comp, but FPX have no reason to do that. They don't need to go in. They got the objective. They already had a turn on bot side, so IG right now are just matching one for one. And LWX is getting all that, that free CS and top side, yeah. getting an EXP advantage, getting a gold advantage to where IG are sharing all this gold and EXP in the mid lane. Well, you can see it's only like the one item across the board for the Shy. He doesn't even have his first item, so. We're even seeing a trade that we've seen consistently throughout playoffs where, you know, one team will just continuously opt out for those early Drakes and just snowball this gold advantage. And those are typically the teams we've seen come out ahead because when that third Drake comes, they're at higher item power spikes. They're able to take these fights quite well. And so far, FPX are the ones set up in that position. But let's just remember IG working towards an Infernal Rift with two Dragons in their back pocket already. When we talked about the team that needing to really snowball and push ahead, while they haven't done that, an Infernal Soul is a condition that could help net them some more momentum. Gimgun right now sitting with the most gold in the game, but Gimgun and Tien both doing such a good job to go forward. Obviously, the standout member for IG is Rookie. Yeah. Sitting with about a 1k gold lead over Dwimby. He's actually matching Gimgun's gold at the moment as well. So you can see eyes on Gimgun for FPX, eyes on Rookie for Invictus Gaming. And I was coming into today expecting a lot of blood, a lot of matching, a lot of chaos. But in this game one, it's been based on the picks through the early game that Tien set up the top side. It's been based on IG's rookie trying to find momentum as well. IG have the highest champion kills per minute in the LPL. If you include all of playoffs, if you include all the regular splits, so bloody games are definitely what you see with IG. FPX have been a bit of a slower team. They usually have a much faster, like, first five minutes, as we've seen. Yeah. They're very good at finding those first bloods and getting those early ganks off, but that's typically when we've seen them not exactly take their foot off the gas, but me and you were talking about this earlier. They are typically the author of their own demise yeah. with a lot of the engages they look for. But at least with a comp like this, at least with the draft we talked about, as Herald gets charged down through the mid lane. With the lead already on Gimgun, with him farming away, they are set up for their own success as well. And Root narrowly misses, Doombi gets away in time, mid turret defended, LWX almost goes down. Puff has his ulti, but doesn't think he can kill LWX, and I tend to agree with him at this point in the game, without one of those second items in his back pocket. So, LWX gets away, turret hold for IG, and the farm continues, ladies and gentlemen. Five kills with 18 minutes. We'll, uh, we'll eventually ramp this one up for you, don't worry. Yep, and now all those resets coming out. We'll take a look at itemization. It's interesting to note that the Shy went for the Nashus Tooth Start, which is typically more of a, like, dueling, pulling yeah. someone to Death Realm, getting oh, that oh, 1v1 oh. item rather than, you know, something like a Leandri's, which is much more about team fight and playing with your your passive aura around you, dealing all that damage, proccing that on everyone, or something like a Proto Belt, which can get you onto the carry even faster. Because we have a dual Gimgun at this point. He got an early Trinity Force. He beat the Shy to the one item mark, but I see the Seekers. I see the defensive capabilities now for the Shy. He also has Conquer, so he will do better in the uh, extended okay, trade. Okay. Especially now, I, I still think he, he definitely comes out ahead in that 1v1. He's still sitting on the Seeker's Arm Guard, of course, so having the armor as well as the Ninja Tabby. Tabby. definitely, yeah, definitely helps. I'll be curious, though, as we get towards the Death Stance for Gimgun as his second item. Because he is in a very favorable position. Uh, is down CS, but again, that kill early with the couple assists helps him a lot. We've also seen, and we can even see it right now on the minimap, that all of FPX's members are continuously just pushing sides and hovering mid. They yeah. are looking for these group that plays. They're prepared for anything that IG can throw their way. And I expect to see them continuously set up for kind of like a two-lane setup where we'll s we're, we'll see Gimgun pushing out aggressively, but Duinbi typically should just be catching waves on the weak side of the map. It should be a lot more about Tien playing with Gimgun, as we've seen all game long. Yeah, the threat of Duinbi as well. We know what Galio is. He hovers between Skirt of Vision, sets up the ulti. And then when he gets that Sonya's Dalagos as well, is such a great disruptor to the back line. That's the great thing too, right, is he doesn't even need to be a big damage force in this game because of yep. the champions around him. He could just go for that second item, Zanya's, buy more time in fights, and just be this big CC and zoning tool for FPX. Yeah, we know the Doombies Galios. 
pretty much made exactly that in the past. We also talked about Rookie's items earlier and how cheap they are, and it shows now to where he is sitting on that, that two-item combo of the GLP plus the Twin Shadow, so yep. he will be a lot of a nuisance for the enemy team. We're at a very good point, actually, because Ning has the Umbral Glaive. There's the Black Cleaver picked up as well. And for Ning, he's going to be loving this Black Cleaver purchase from Puff because that's going to be helping him. Uh, I think Ning right now, who's been farming all game long, by the way, is at a very good point. 190 CS at 20 minutes as a jungler. Plus, he's got a sizable lead over Tien's farm. We do have Dragon coming up in 27 seconds, so IG have just hard committed five men to bot side to be able to guarantee this vision, not have to wait out and answer waves on the sides. As we've seen, FPX have set up that top wave. It is pushing into IG's turret. The Shy does have TP if he wanted to go answer that, but instead realizing, hey, I don't want to have to dedicate that, that yeah. tool, dedicate that resource, he's just going to walk straight to the Dragon. Knowing the Shy, he'll take the fight, and if IG win, he'll TP up there. Him, Doonby also just finished his Anjas. So now he does okay. have that tool to buy time in these fights. Two items here for the Galio Renan's Hurricane for the Ash as well. We're hitting two items pretty much across the board. Bar a couple of key members. Remember, Infernal Soul on the way. IG already have two in their back pocket as FTX start the position. Kim Dune on the flank. Balan knows he's there, but it's taken. Tien gets the first dragon of the game in IG. Not keen on the fight yet, but Doombi might be caught on out as the Deskrass doesn't pull in. But there's the Realm onto Doombi. He comes back in with a Justice Punch. The Shy as he comes on out. Here's the rest of IG, but Kim Dune oh! on the flank with a Hex that Golden Maiden. He's done enough damage as Doombi. Melee are down with the two man ulti, but the pop lost them. He's on to four. Golden is rookie. Protobelt out. No one's died yet, but IG with a low health bar. But do you think they can? No. Bowland goes in while well, the rest of FBX have a great old time. Puff's dying too. And Bowland, the re engage, was just so troll. It was not nice to see. But what was nice was seeing Gimgoon's flank coming in. Nice Hextech ultimatum to set up that nice ult from Doonby. They did get the members of IG about down to half HP. But as you said, uh, Balan's dredge line, not exactly. He had play. like one quarter of his health and IG, you can that, see they were not reluctant. That is obviously us saying it in hindsight, which is very easy. <laughs> of course. But what is in hindsight is FPX with all those picks turning through the Baron. That Baron is going to net them such a good lead in this game. 22 minutes in, FPX with a comp that will outscale, that will destroy towards this later game. Lyric, very easy position right now for FPX. A 5k gold lead. Time and to start pushing. It goes back to what we said about how you look at IG's comp, and it's very burst reliant, right? Nico's a burst champion, Graves is a burst champion. Sure, IG has, I mean, the Shy's itemized in a bit more way to get a bit more value of extended trades but once yep. again Mordekaiser wanting to burst out one of these party members for FBX but you're not going to burst out to MB he already is on his he has the taunt coming in as well the kindred lanterns fight that was a bit unfortunate was LWX's ult missing because the shy went right into the death realm and the FBX members do get quite low I'll surprise they lasted so long That's on but his. nice ult coming out from Gimdu and pointing out the Zanyas as well the knock up and there's the Lamsha fight so none of that burst being able to take down the members of FPX this is where it looks a bit dicey Balan flashes forward gets the hook but right there Gimgoon with the burst crisp able to follow up and Doombi as well just giving a really nice angle for Tien to get in as well and deal all that damage you look at Doombi's damage though I mean he's the engager but also Saved his flash until the end for the almost three-man shield of Duran. FPX now in a bit of a tear with this Baron as the Shy still wants a 1v1 Gimjoon, but he's got the Death Dance now, and that uppercut with the scissor leg hurts a lot. Hex that golem made him. He's just gone. Gimjoon better than Khan. Just saying it in game one, because right now he's dumpstering the Shy. And now they have Baron. I mean, 5v4 on the map, they can easily take down this bot side turret. Rookie is looking for something, though, but... Angle Bob's need to connect. This is what we all said earlier on. The FPX's comp is just so mobile. They're, they're, it's very easy for them to get away from any of IG's engagers. What do you do now? I mean, this looks pretty next to Hysterics, I'm going to say, this to me looks like draft difference. Okay. Which, I mean, let's go back to LGD. Uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't something new for IG. No. A lot of the time, IG get away with murder. It's quite literal, but it's also funny enough to see a lot of IG's drafts. I know a lot of people don't agree with it. But you just kind of learn to accept them. You learn to accept, you embrace them, and then then as, I don't want to say coin flips, but you know, as you pray, you just kind of hope it'll work out. This you game, it didn't, win. and I really want to go back to what much will said one more time, that FPX had 18 days to prepare for this. FPX had so much time to watch all of playoffs, they had enough time to watch IG. Of course, IG also did have quite a bit of time, but FPX especially 
which seeing how badly their style failed, not only in playoffs, but in the regular split, of course would go back to the drawing board, to where if you're IG, you could have a, a false sense of security in saying, well, you know, we only lost one playoff match. We didn't have a good read on draft. We first picked a list to every game, all these things. So where FPX had to dissect themselves and rebuild. I just love that solo kill. Uh, Doombi kind of comes in in the end, but you give it to Gimgoon. And yeah, a bit of a highlight in the bottom of your screen. You can see Gimgoon is, uh, he's been rolling towards the end of the split. You and I use the terminology duct tape for FPX. So when I was checking their solo queues last night, yeah. I was so confused when I opened Game Goons and thought, oh, maybe this is actually cons because his most played champions this week were Jace, Camille, Irelia, and Silas. Which is like the exact same as what we saw with Khan. Enchanted Kassara. Now, the one thing about LWX's uh, game is he's missed a lot as Balan is caught out, shouldn't be here, depth charge used. Puff wants to heal his support, but Balan's dead for the second time and not well, a good start to IG because the Shy's about to be solo killed once again. The Death Realm means that he is sure to die. Question mark, hook shot, wall shot. One more, flashes. Oh! Gim Goon, your big man. The center kind of cheats. The Death Brass comes in. Puff, that's not fair. I wanted to see that play out. That was, like both of them with a nice outplay. The flash coming in from Gim Goon, then the return flash coming in from the Shy. It was something of beauty until Ning and Puff got involved. But either way, this doesn't change the way I feel about FPX this game. They're heading towards an Infernal Soul. But do we even get there at this point? It's just extra stats. We have a 6k gold lead on the side of FPX. I mean, they're so fed right now. They have all the gold on their main carries. Can I ask, have you ever been in a League of Legends game and say 1v1 me after getting angry that other people interjected? I will not answer that question, and I will, <laughs> you know, look at this because we see the Hexic Ultimate coming out from Dim Goon. Now the Shy pulled into the Death Realm. Does get the first Q, but it wasn't isolated, it looked like, so it actually didn't get a ton of damage. So close to finishing it off, does flash that isolated Q, comes out with the W. Oh, that's cheating. It was, it was that, that's cheating. cheating, man. Come on. I'm not sure he would have won still, but it was yeah, still cheating. But that's the answer yeah, I want to find exactly, out. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. That was the best of two, is what you're saying. Yeah, we didn't get the answer we wanted. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll find out pretty soon. Uh, at least for the Shy, even though the kill was taken away. Uh, he survives, he gets to keep farming up, he keeps to... I mean, it, we're not going to get the answer we want because Gimgoon's also farming up. Gimgoon is also picking up more Infernal yeah, Drakes. Very true. But this game one has been, so far, what I least expected, right? IG, who have looked for options, but have been pretty limited in where Ning's paid attention to, where the actions happen. It hasn't been a very IG game. The FPX have got to play this out slow. We've seen IG succeed when they have either push or set up in top plus mid, yep. and you have like roaming and engaged champions coming out from Ning and Balan. This game, they had the losing bot lane, so we didn't get to see Balan move out of lane much. Of course, the Shy doesn't fare well in the 1v1. They don't fare too well in the 2v2 either. But I mean, and Duinby even always has the global to match. If you're watching FPX, not often do you see TN, you know, pay attention to top, right? No, I mean, no. Like, that's why the shot is like, ah, oh, well, I'm level two. It, it, it's like it never happens. No, no. You know, it will happen once every blue moon, but to see them come into this first game, draft with this comp. Hey, it landed, though. Kim Goon coming on in, and Balan now stuck in the middle. Hero's entrance going to lay it down, and Puff's just dead. Balan low the shy in the middle of it all with the death realm to play with. Kim Goon trying to cape this one out. He gets an up and go. He gets a hook shot, wall shot. The shy is going to come out in a second, and there they are waiting. At least the shy gets Kim Goon. Lateral damage, bit of damage on the excess as Balan is not Balan, it's Rookie wants a flank. FPX have the fast track to the base, so they should be able to take this inhibitor. Baron's also up. Rookie's still waiting for this one, Lyric. 40 seconds on the shot. I mean, Rookie's half HP. You have every member of well, FPX. That's Balan's HP because Spectator's not right, remember? True. As the most annoying thing that still needs to be changed. He runs away as Doombi protobelts towards him as Tien's over the wall. Balan too far forward. What's new? As on to Ning, a bit of trading, and there's the Baron. Even with Rookie being full HP, I mean, you're in a 3v5 against a comp that has absolutely everything up. We have Lamb yep. to fight for Tien. They have more items. They have more sustained damage. They have more survivability tools. I can understand, though, from IG's perspective, because, right, this is where we always say you need to make the Hail Mary. You need to you need to go for the, like, 20-80 play and hope that 20% lands so you can get back in the game. That's IG's style. They always force the same play, and I think... A lot of IG fans out there know that 
if something doesn't work, IG won't give up. They'll try and try again until they lose the game. I also feel like it's very comp dependent to where if you do have a comp that gets hard outscaled, that's when you go for the Hail Marys. Uh, it's flashing away from the Enchanted Corsair from Ning. Phase Rush also helped. Bowland in the river, but right now Rookie might have to get out of there too with Doomy just flanks on him with the TP. Wow. Rookie, they know you're there. We're going to get the Yakety Sacks. As, or the whole of FPX want him, but decide against it. Barren time it is. FPX making the smart decision, saying, hey, why are we going to waste time and chase down another member of IG? We can go to the Baron, and guess what? IG potentially need to come into us, or we just get a free Baron. They're going to have to contest this one, but it's already going to be gone But by Wimby. the time they get there. Stretch line connects onto Doombi. The Death Realm still being weighed. As the Shy finally pulls it off. Puff comes in with the Dawning Shadows. The Shy's in the middle of all this, though, while Balan gets poked down. Here comes the Mordekaiser, and the Lamb's respite from Tien means Doombi won't die. The Flay sends him up, and Doombi even picks up the kill. 13 to 4, soon to be more with Puff getting launched on. This is a massacre, and FBX, they're done with their dinner. They want dessert. And it's great to see when Doombi has been playing that the rookie-esque role, and pretty much playing 1v9 in the summer split. Great to see this Speaking team of, step up as a whole. Pop Blossom. Kim Goon's still going to be going for, but that's the fake one. Rookie's they're, they're ending the game. Yeah. Well, I think this is over 10 minutes ago, don't you? Maybe like 31. 31? Okay. Fair enough. Especially when Kim Goon got ahead. FBX. I mean, this is meant to be a regional qualifier, and it felt like another day in the office. Yeah, it was very literally another day in the office for IG. For FBX, though, this was a really solid win. Again, they've been on a bit of a losing streak. They didn't look hot at all up yep. against V5, where they lost 3-1 to one for V5. So coming in with this nice win, it's going to be nice to use that momentum and go forward. For IG, go back to the drawing board. We need to remember that they came into this picking red side when we've seen pretty much every other team picking blue. Yeah, blue yeah. It's also strange in the sense that we said, hey, FPX kind of have the set band they need to have with Dilution. You could even say the same thing with the Kalista, and then you also have things like the Caitlyn coming out. I feel like it would really restrict the the pools of FPX and you know not give them any flexibility if they were forced on the red side. You know what we also saw is we saw that Nautilus first pick come through to deny Chris, but Chris gets his thresh, which he's looked fantastic on in the past anyway. So IG didn't really limit much of FPX in no, the draft at all. No disrespect to Chris, but again, I feel like IG did him a favor. Yeah, like, they he are. looked absolutely <laughs> great on this thresh. He was constantly roaming around the map. LWX, he missed some ultimates, but you but know. he hit some as well. He put down the DPS and he yeah. also consistently kept up the push in bot lane. But the two people we need to highlight right, Gimgoon and Doombi. Doombi doing yeah. such a great job in these skirmishes. And Gimgoon saying, hey, Give me the Camille. Have confidence in me. Believe in what I can do. He delivered. I loved also that we saw Tien gank topside so early in the game, put the shy behind. As you said in game, it's a surefire hit to put IG in harm's way. Like the shy being punished is how teams have beaten Invictus Gaming in the past. We've also just seen FPX and Shot Kong as a whole just really come together. Like they had, Finally, they had a clear right. game plan. They played around all their priorities, all their windows quite well. They knew how to execute in these team fights and they were always objective focused, right? They knew we're going to give up these early dragons and get gold on the map sure. and we're not going to chase Rookie at the end. We're going to get the Baron. They always had their mind, their eyes set on the goal. It's crazy to me that, you know, that was over in 36 minutes, but it did feel like, again, it was over very early into the yeah. game with how FPX comp went and how IG just couldn't find any options. Uh, Ning was farming very well, but he never got into those fights where he could use it apart from the bottom side. But from there, Balan engages. Doombi gets that three-man taunt, and it's over anyway yep. for the re-engage. So that was game one, and already I'm going, well, IG fans, be worried. My prediction's already wrong. Yep. You said, well, you said 3-0 IG. Yeah. Well, I said 3-1. To be fair, this was a match that could have gone any way. We think the this. series could go anyway, anyway right? Anyway, Two anyway, world anyway. champions, 2018-2019. They're fighting for fourth seed at Worlds. And at this point, FPX look pretty great.